It's time to discuss the last week in professional wrestling with that way cool wrestling show, Breakout. Welcome everybody to another edition of that way cool wrestling show, Breakout. I am your host, the Celtic Casanova. Today things are going to be a little bit uglier. As my valet is not joining us today, she's a little under the weather. She will be back next week. Get well soon, honey. So today I'm going to bring in my co-host, the producer extraordinaire, Danny J. What's happening, brother? How are you? Very good to have to be on the show here. I love uh, jumping on with you. And we're going to talk about the weekend wrestling, so I'm excited for this. Hold up. You know how I roll. Okay. I got an A&W diet root beer. So... First and last appearance on Breakout. I don't care if it is your show or not. May not <laughs> grab a beer. It's baseball season. Wrestling's always in season. Let's go. Courtesy of the DJV Productions Network. Oh, I must not have gotten mine yet. No. I have it in my trunk. <laughs> it's too damn hot out there, man. I didn't put on it sleeves is. for this today. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> the sun's out, gonna, sun's great, out. great week in wrestling. We had such a great week to, this week. I, I'm excited to be on the show today. I really am. It was an awesome week in wrestling. Did you see the dirt sheets this week? I glanced over, but this is your show, so I want to let you lead us off if you would. Sure. Uh, so I guess th there really wasn't much going on this week as compared to some of the other weeks as far as the dirt sheets concerned, but there's one thing. Uh, running rampant, seemed to be consistent across the board, was a rumor for the main event at WrestleMania 36 this year. I'm not sure if that mm -hmm. caught your eye. Um, the rumored main event is an I Quit match for the WWE Championship. I think that's Drew McIntyre's time. I get them confused now because there's 50,000 belts in the land of the Fed. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be, they're planning to get the belt off of McIntyre, and I heard that's going to be SummerSlam when they take the belt off of him, but Edge versus Randy Orton in an I Quit match. I'm going to save you the trouble, WWE. I quit right now. I'm out. Yeah. yeah. Because both uh, should have quit a long time ago. <laughs> I did quit a while ago, but... I mean, I personally, I personally quit the, the, the WWE Network. I, I got out of it what I was going to get out of it for a number of years. Uh, I realized, there you go. See, and then, and, Ang and Angus doesn't really care. And the thing he has is, no idea. he has no idea at all. And the thing is, one, too, two, three, four was the password. <laughs> He's so secure. He <laughs> should work for LifeLock. <laughs> but, but the thing is, I figured out that anything I want to watch is still on YouTube, regardless of having yeah. a network. And, uh, the, the insane, lack of writing and 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 i don't want to say production but the lack of writing and just overall sports entertainment which everybody on this network knows i'm not a big fan of uh it you just know, wasn't know. worth it to me so i was like you're out the door yeah much like so, much like in italy the sky network adios wwe yes, in place of AEW. The Italians are going to get some quality entertainment now. We'll get into Dynamite a little bit later. What a hell of an episode that was this week. And it really was. I, I can't with you drinking this diet root beer. <laughs> diet root beer. Yes. A &W. Right, but anyway, back to the dirt sheets. Uh, I got one more little note from the dirt sheets. But, yeah, you bringing up that AEW replacing WWE in Italy is a huge deal. A like, that, that's something that kind of went by the wayside. But WWE has been – a leader in sports entertainment for over 50 years now. And to be replaced like that by an upstart company, that speaks volumes to mm -hmm. the quality of WWE programming. It really does. But, and it makes you think, should they only be, and it comes down to WWE still, even though the fans say otherwise, still treat NXT like a feeder fed rather than one of their upstart becoming their main show because now let's exactly. face it everybody likes nxt more than raw and they oh, sure as hell like it more than and they sure as hell are not liking smackdown right now i know we're I, let's just put a pin in this real quick 
We'll get back to NXT. Let's just get this one last news story up. We'll wrap up the news. But I, I do want to touch on what you just brought up. Mm -hmm. um, so the last news item I have for the day is Tessa holding up the Impact Heavyweight Champion Heavyweight Championship for $150,000. Do we know much is confirmed? They said that the belt is worth anywhere between ten and twenty-five thousand for a TV used belt. Meaning that what what you have to understand is that they have belts. They have multiple yeah, they versions have of the belt. Replicas, and then they've got right. the real. Belt. They have the multi. The, the belts that are used on television are highly polished. They're a little bit different than the ones that they carry with them to house shows, that type of thing. Um, so, and this has always been a practice of wrestling, be it WWF, WWE, WCW, NWA, that type of thing. There's always been a television version and a house version. Uh, the house version being less money, so it's less of a liability if something happens to it. But the television version, replica. Really, that's where a replica really came from. Sure. Uh, was that it was the, you're getting the house version of a belt, and when you get a really good replica, when you're spending upwards of five hundred dollars, you're still not there, but you're closer to what the house versions are than the regular replicas at two hundred and fifty or whatever the case was. Exactly, but yeah, but just the badge on her, like she's got a terrible reputation as it is right now. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I love so that. I don't like, know. I, I do not know her personally. I, I love her. To, I love her. I love her to death. I really. I think she's a great worker. No, we know. We all see your posts on Facebook and Instagram. I, I, and, I am so highly attracted to that woman. It's not even. Let's funny. just say this you, could, you could really get behind her. I could really get behind her, but apparently, <laughs> she's a class A bitch in the locker room. That's that's no matter where she goes. That's what the, the, the rumor but, is, is that she just her, is like a, kind of like a bully. But her getting fired, like you would think in her head, like she's got to be self-aware enough to know what her reputation is. Like getting fired at, at the top of a company, like it's almost unheard of that top talent is getting fired and just done with that day. Like you would think, okay, maybe I messed up. Let's re hit the restart button. Let's try to be a little bit better of a person. Let's try to get to WWE. Let's get an AEW contract. Wherever she might land, like she's got to start correcting this reputation, and then yeah. holding up the company for one hundred fifty thousand dollars for a championship. Get the hell out of here! No one's going to want to do business. Now, with you. Maybe that was a um, like they're blowing it into the more literal sense, but maybe that was you fired me. You want your belt back? Give me one hundred fifty thousand. Pay me out my contract. Maybe yeah. like, we're not. We don't know. We don't know the exact scenario what that is. She might literally not not be expecting to get well, on. You know, and, is that she didn't there was a statement that came out that said while she was under contract, she was in Mexico and they yeah. asked her, they said, Hey, they they tried to work with her. They tried to be understanding. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. she just didn't reciprocate on her end. They asked her to film promos on her phone. She didn't do, she it. Didn't do it. Yeah. They were back against the wall. They did what they had to do, and now she's coming out and one hundred fifty thousand dollars. You want your belt back? I would give her a big middle finger. And be like, "Fuck you, bitch!" Like we're gonna. Uh, well, that's what they, they ended up doing. And and here's the deal: she was still working while she was in Mexico. She was accepting oh, yeah. booking. She was getting bookings in Mexico. Well, if you Thanks follow her you. social feed, it's not like she was even quarantining. She was just kind of. She was living life. She was doing photo shoots. She's still working. Yeah, she was making money regardless. And and that's the thing that probably was another big F you to her from Impact saying, you know what, not for nothing, honey. It's not like you're hurting like some people. It's not like, you know, we can't bring you in and you can't work or whatever. And uh, Yeah, you're the, the top dog right now. We took a chance on you. Uh, being a woman and giving you the man's title, not to sound chauvinistic, but that's exactly what this business is. That's a huge shot. Like it's a you huge. I mean, it was, and I and I feel for her because that was that they can't take that away from her. She no. is she is the first women's heavyweight champion, and and really and she and she her. is a justifiable champion. Now, here's some things I had to say about it from the beginning. She beat Brian Cage. Should have never happened. 
No, absolutely not. It never happened. Beat Brian Cage. God bless him. He likes her a lot. He's a good friend with her. He was happy to do the job to her, but it did not make sense. And you and I both, when we were wrestling, always were taught what you're doing has to make sense. So well, don't do exactly. it. You know, That's because, the most important part of any match, any storyline. It's got to be believable. It's got to mm -hmm. be consistent. And, you know, for her to beat him is, is not. like. But for her to go over on, say, like a Sammy Callahan, that's perfectly feasible. Yeah, I mean, he was relatively – he was bigger than her, but he, but he was about the same height. And, and But he's not a body guy. And he's not a body guy. But Brian Cage, I mean, there, you're, there's, nobody's getting Brian Cage on his back. There, there, no, it's just not yeah, – Especially without being a thing, especially a woman. Well, especially a 120-pound woman, whatever the hell she is. But you anyway, know, enough, about, enough about Tessa. Let's keep this moving. You brought up, you brought up just a little bit ago about NXT. Are yeah. you starting to feel a little bit of a trickle down effect from the main roster down to NXT? Like before before COVID started, NXT was was white hot as it's been since it's become more prominent and they're doing their takeover specials and everything. And yeah. they just announced uh, Takeover Triple X coming up, their 30th takeover. Should be exciting. But at the same point in time, like it just feels like it's becoming a very watered down product. Well, here's what I see happening. The main roster. Here's what I see happening. You have a product that's outshining the guys that have been there for years and years and years. Okay? Wednesday night wrestling for NXT is completely outshining Raw, which is their granddaddy. Oh, big it's time. completely outshining SmackDown, which they had so much money invested in another network with network with demands. Okay, really? WWE, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. And you're not doing it. You know, that type of thing. And they are still, what I see WWE doing is seeing that they're wrong and not accepting that they're wrong. Okay. You're going to sit there and very quietly push NXT and stuff like that. But you're never going to say, nope, it's the greatest thing out there. Because, it, because that would be, go against the way you were acting before. You sure. know what I mean? And, and I, in all honesty, and, and, and I say this as a fan, above anybody else being in this business, whatever, they really, honestly, 100% let their pride envelop and, and, and decide their decision-making. And oh, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. You know, we can, we're, we're doing couch coaching here. You know they're making money, so they're doing something right. Exactly. Okay. I mean, that, I mean that's what it comes down to. But in the same sense, we can go back to saying, "Hey, WWE, when you bought WCW, you could have let Shane McMahon run WCW as your competitor and blow up the Monday Night Wars for another fifteen years." Exactly. Give the illusion that it is two separate companies. Still try to keep a TNT contract. Run competitive shows. And it's going to make both products better. And at the end of the day, Titan Sports, whatever you want to call it, they were making the money. But, but no, I, it was more of a thing to shut it down and say, I won, than to capitalize on what would have been the Monday Night War of the decade. Oh, I agree. But now yeah, they're involved yeah. in this Wednesday Night War to their own doing because yeah, yeah, NXT, yeah. the only reason they're running live on Wednesdays is because AEW is there. Before that, it was a tape show. They used to film about a month worth of yeah. shows, and now they're getting their ass kicked every week, just about. I mean, they, they do have a couple wins. And I understand, and I'm not a WWE guy, but they're getting their ass kicked putting on a good show. Yeah. Understand I mean, that. That's a very important factor to say. WWE NXT is not putting out a bad show. It is not. It's it's not bad, but it's, it's not, not the NXT a, of the last five years. No, it's not because they're now getting, like you said before, the trickle down from the big Fed. They're like, let's bring everything in. Uh, we were on that way cool wrestling show earlier today. We we it's already released. It's on the it's on DJB Productions Network, and Mark Lindsay was reading. Uh, excerpts from uh, Eric Young's um, exit 
interview. Oh, I listened to that interview today with Eric Young. Yeah, yeah. And He's Eric Young. On our radio this week. Right. And he was saying, Hal, everybody has the same finish, same pace, same interview, same uh, entrance style. That type everybody of thing. Everybody does the same shit. Like and that's they're, they're, in this, they're in this COVID era, and before WWE started putting wrestlers at ringside, everybody's still pandering as if there's a crowd there. It's insulting to us as the audience yes. at home. Like, and the only one there was one person before they started putting people behind plexiglass, making it look like a hockey game. Yeah, uh, Swerve Scott was the only one who pandered to the camera, didn't pretend there was a crowd there. And he he's the only one that felt relatable during the whole COVID era. And he probably you know, caught shit saying. for it. And he probably caught shit for it too. I bet you. Oh, I'm I sure bet he you. did. He's not doing it anymore. But but the thing is though, they're putting out this great show, and they are still not. It, 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 that's a control thing for WWE. WWE has this thing where they want their thumb like this. And yep. they want to do that, and they and, and it's their way of controlling everything, and it's also their way of controlling the product. Because of that mentality, you will not have a Roddy Piper anymore. You will not have a Hulk Hogan anymore. You will not have a Ric Flair anymore because nobody is allowed to do what is outside of what they're scripting. Exactly, and you're not gonna. That's why they can't build stars anymore because it comes down to one simple point, and it's a it's a buzz phrase. It is what it is, but they're not letting the talented be talented anymore. And I'll tell you right now, Charles Gregory said today when I made that statement, he said, "Well, no, you got like guys like Samoa Joe, and you got other indie guys, guys that they did not uh, create. Keith Lee, as an example, so on and so forth." But I said, sure. "Here's the deal, though." Those guys will never be bigger than what they are right now. No. I think and of all the names you mentioned, though, Keith Lee has the best chance of being that marquee household name. Out of yeah. anybody in WWE right now, it's Keith Lee. Right. And if they but, fight by him. I, I know, well, honestly, if I was making a, a, a professional decision as a wrestler, I don't think I would want to move from NXT. No, I, that's why Chompa's staying down there. He's like, I got it good down here. Like, my family's in Florida. Why am I going to be put on the road to get lost in the shuffle? And that's like, he's a top guy, in my opinion. Like, I, yes, I love everything he's done in NXT from, from DIY to his solo run with Goldie. Mm -hmm. It's just, he's been wonderful. But right yeah, now, for me, just to, just to put a bow tie on this, NXT is not the same NXT to me. It's become very frustrating to me. I enjoy it, but it could be better. And it just, I heard Luke Harper say it, or uh, Brody Lee, in an interview a couple weeks ago, everything in WWE could always be better. They just don't let it be. And that's the, the bottom line. And I think the people that don't say those type of statements are the people that are still holding out hope that they'll have a contract. I agree. At the, there's, end, there's at, the, at the end of the day, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a job. This is a job, a paycheck to feed your family. You know what I mean? Sure. And who doesn't want to be at the highest level of their job? And in all honesty, in the business, WWE is going to be your highest thing. But you're taking such a risk because you don't know what they're going to do with you. They could take you, work with you a little bit, and then drown you out so bad that forget about going anywhere else. No one's going to really want you. Well, piggybacking yeah. off of what you just said, the, the prime example of that are Gallows and Anderson. Yeah. They were involved with the main event of night one of WrestleMania this year. They re-signed mm -hmm. contracts in December, which surprised everybody. And Carl Anderson is on record saying last weekend, hey, we sat down with Triple H. We had a deal in the works with New Japan and AEW, and AEW would let us work for New Japan. But we went with Triple H because he's the one that sat us down, and he told us that, hey, who knows how long this AEW is going to be here, but but WWE will always be here for you. And then right in the middle of a right. pandemic, Gallows and Anderson get fired. And then they just debuted for Impact this weekend, who hit a major reset button for their whole promotion. 
And I think they did a hell of a job. I followed the pay-per-view closely on Saturday. There were two pay-per-views this weekend, Slammiversary and Extreme Rules. Slammiversary right. was the only one worth, worth your dime and time. And they did a really good job of hitting the reset button. They brought in talents like EC3. They brought back Eric Young. The Good Brothers, Carl Anderson, and, L and the Big LG debuted. Yeah. They, they did one hell of a job, and, and you had the Motor City Machine Guns return out of nowhere. I don't think anybody saw that coming. They're one of the best tag teams. No. The and, and, and look what happened, though. They got all these people, and then they changed the entire championship lineup. Because exactly. they were they, 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 right before the guns came in, they were celebrating the North's 400 and some odd day reign as the longest running champions in Impact. And the because North they had is nobody, incredible. And they had, but they had nobody to wrestle. Who was yeah. there? Who was I there? Agree. So it was, time, it was time for them to drop the belts. There was nothing more they could do with them. At that point in time, it right. just becomes like you're holding the belts hostage. The belts didn't need them, they didn't need the belts. So now what they're they're doing, they the Motor City Machine Guns won on Tuesday, and they're the new champions out of left field. And that creates so many more stories coming in. You could do a couple more dream matches. Like you've got the Good Brothers you could do against uh, Motor City Machine Guns. And I think that's a captivating story to tell. I think so. I honestly but think I, so. I, really, I really love what they're doing with Moose right now at Impact. Of all things, he really stands out. He stood out to me. In Ring of Honor years ago, when I saw him there, but right now he's so delusional, and he's so convincing that he feels that he's the TNA Heavyweight Championship when he really just took this belt of a where out of a warehouse and is calling himself the champion. No different than say like an FTW champion or a million dollar champion or something like that. But he's got everybody at home believing that hey, I'm this legitimate champion. And he defends the belt accordingly. Well, here's the thing. I mean, when they did the Anthem Sports bought Access TV. So yeah. they finally have a television. Where they're not going to lose a television network. That's the best way for them to stay on television was to buy the freaking television. Right? Exactly. So they, so they do that. They have a TNA anthology show as part of one of their upcoming, like when they first three or four weeks that they were actually on Access. And it turned out that the TNA recap, which was like going back to the beginning and doing like a, a, a historic anthology from them, was one of the highest ratings they had for wrestling on that channel. So Axis sure. went to them and said, listen, we want more TNA stuff. Apparently, people like TNA. Okay. It really so, wasn't that bad. Nah, at nah. sometimes, but at sometimes it was brutal. I mean, understand what it is. I mean, if you're looking, if you're going back and seeing the, uh, the the asylum days, and you're seeing some yeah. of the really cool where it came from, it would be an interesting show to watch because TNA was great back then. Okay, so they run with it. All right, let's pull out that TNA title, and do a FTW million dollar champion, whatever. Sure. Woo woo woo! It's a good champion. story. Like it's, it's been proven. Right. It's a proven story. And then, not for nothing, now that they have their world championship back, i.e. now Eddie Edwards, why not make the TNA title their mid-card title? Which it kind of is by default because yeah. Eddie Edwards it, is the face of the company now. He's, but it cannot, be, it cannot be considered or displayed or presented as a second world title because it's a, defunct, it's a defunct championship it matches cody's tnt title in a way tna title, TNT title. Which, let's, let's use this as a springboard to get into dynamite yeah yeah you and i could talk all day we're getting a little long-winded on things but let's use that as a springboard so like let's make mooses a tv title Something comparable to what AEW is doing with the TNT title. Yeah. And this week was the first week they delivered on a promise on Dynamite that Cody was going to defend this belt against anybody. Yeah. And, and really, anybody did come through the curtain this week. No music, no nothing. Eddie Kingston comes out with a microphone, cuts an absolute fire of a promo. Yes, and he did. Then 
stepped in the ring and has one of the most hard-hitting wrestling matches I've seen on TV this year. Kingston and, is coming into his own. He, okay, I did not, I did not like his work in Impact. Me either. At all. Uh, I, I was Kingston starting to like him in NWA a little bit, but um, he cuts a great promo. Um, the realism was, just went yeah, yeah, me. yeah. It really was. I mean, they were kind of overselling a little bit. He had to sell his boots to pay his mortgage and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right, well, how much can he get for his fucking boots? You know what I mean? And he's That's Eddie true. Kingston. He's not Ric Flair. <laughs> like, hey, how much can he get? But I can see your car payment. That's maybe. part of the story. Like, he's taking whatever yeah. dime he can get. And now he's getting his yeah. shot. He's got new boots. His knee was messy. He did such a good job of yeah, selling that match. the entire match. Great match, by the way. Uh, both shined. Cody and he both shined in that match. We, uh, we were discussing it live in the in the, the discussion the chat, as it happened, yeah, and I think yeah. we were all worked into believing that that was a legitimate injury. Right. Right, and I was watching it, and I was trying to see if it was, and I'm like, now nah, he's selling it, now he's selling it. I'm like, no, maybe he's not. Maybe, And I was trying to see how he tweaked it, and but I was like, no, nah, I think they're, they're they're selling it too much. So I said, I kind of figured that they were. He was. It was a sell. But because uh, then he gets into the into the figure four and he's tapping out over top of the tax. Like it was just such a good visual for a finish. And yeah. like, and I loved how I loved how everybody gringed. Like Sunny Sunny Kiss was making camera history when when he got when Cody got power bombed into the tax because Sunny Kiss was like. <laughs> I did, you know, there are a lot of good visuals in that match. The terror in that, in that kid dies. You know what I mean? Um, now, where I just, do you right. where, just continue in the trend of talking about dynamite? Where do you yeah. stand on MJF? Are they doing right by him right now, or are the wheels kind of spinning to where he's kind of stuck in place? Like they got to start doing something with him. Maybe well, he's obviously him. still fighting with. He's obviously still fighting with. Uh, uh, what's his name? Jungle Boy. And well, like, how um, long are we going to keep that going? Like, we need to take a step up with MJF. Well, I think I, that, think I don't think they're getting enough airtime yet to finish it out. There's only been what two matches, really? Roughly but two he's, matches. He's not doing enough. He needs to be on our TV every week, even if it's just a promo, and he needs to wrestle more competitive matches. In, and I I think it. eventually he should be a TNT champion. I agree because it's a yeah. Cody's never beat him. No. So why no. not? No, but I, I think we're done with him and Cody. So Cody's gonna lose it to somebody. And eventually you're gonna get you'll get him. MGL. Who do you yeah. think? Who's your money on? Is it gonna be Warhorse this week? No. Because <laughs> I had no idea who the fuck that was. I don't either, but I, I think like, no. it's enjoyable. I highly recommend I think, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, he's not going to lose it, and he won't lose it until pay per view. I don't think he's going to lose it on television. I, I, I would hope he would. That's where you're wrong. I think they've got to have him lose it on TV. It's a TV I would TV. hope they. I would hope they don't really say it, but I mean, I, I would hope that he does lose it on television. Uh, it should be somebody. I would like him to lose it to Zicky Dice. Yeah. 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 I, oh, yeah. I like Mickey Dice, but that's that's not moving the needle for me. I think it's not dropping the MJF. I think I think we we got through that. And I think that storyline's over. Sign Zicky Dice. What's that? Are they gonna sign Zicky Dice? Zicky Dice got his release from the NWA, even though yeah, he's, he's a television there. champion and he still like does promos. Have you seen some of them where someone's saying he's the world television champion, blah blah blah? But he already asked for his release and was granted his release from the NWA. So Zicky yeah. Dice is a free agent. And sure. Zicky, they sign him up. That's a guy that could add character and could add charisma to their TV every And day. he's a guy that can go to WWE or AEW. Sure. Because his character can work either way. I don't want to see I him would, go to WWE. I don't mm -hmm. want to see him. I would love to see him in AEW. I think AEW would do right by him. I think he would make a great TNT champion. And I think he would be the champion that you're expecting to lose every week and then doesn't. Sure. No, I agree. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think you, you're you going to want to see the chase and get Zicky Dice out of there. That's the how money, good of a deal is. The money's in the chase. 
Yeah. And I think he's that good of a heel to say, like, like we're in the business, so we like him. We know what he's doing. And well, I like respect the exactly what they're doing. Kind of in that Zicky Dice, getting out of NWA territory, uh, Ricky Starks, who's now set up an allegiance with Brian Cage and Taz. And I like that. Like, I mean, they're, they're not too similar, but Ricky, or, uh, bleh, Ricky Starks' charisma is something that could bring Brian Cage up a level as well. And Ricky like, Starks is someone, and Ricky Starks is someone that can go after Cody's TNT title. There's exactly. not to say there's nothing to say that they can't be two different view directions going on with Team Taz. Sure. You know, but what build I mean? him up with Cage and then establish him as your mid card guy in that stable. Maybe bring on a tag team or something with them as well. But I don't know. I'm I'm curious to see what comes of that connection. But yeah. how about that, Matt? Have you ever seen a Falls Count Anywhere match? That just starts in the back for no reason at all. Yeah, yeah. like it, yeah, like it, like it didn't even start in the ring. There was no bell rang, yeah, you yeah. know. Uh, Blade wearing the aprons back there, chopping up meat like a butcher would do. What a fun way to start a match! Then just go. It was a good match. It was a good match. It was a great yeah. match. Uh, I don't want to see them. They've been doing it as of late for a lot, and this could be also travel. You know how it is when you travel and you're stuck. You can't get clothing in or whatever, but like, I don't want to see them in white all the time. They look like they just came from painting an apartment building. They do. Uh, you know, I want to see them back in their black, you know, yeah. in full wrestling gear. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of non wrestling gear at all. I never have yeah. been. Um, well, count anywhere street fight. You can get away with it. Like, yeah, like the, yeah. Like the bunk like house, the bunk house. where dusty used to wear, jeans with yeah. a knee pad over top of the jeans and yeah. whatnot. And Tully wore like the half shirt with the fucking yeah. uh, with the knee pads or, over top of the jeans and, 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 like, and it's funny and, Mark Lindsay and I get and he Mark laughs at me because like as an example we were talking uh, just about Eddie Kingston the boots he had on in that match with Cody were distracting the hell out of me. As soon as they mentioned boots I started looking at the boots he had on and I'm like, they are some ugly fucking boots that he has on right oh, now. They were terrible. They were I horrible. Know. They were just so generically and, black. And I stopped where I stopped watching what was happening, and I was just waiting for close up of the boots. Yeah, I was like, this yeah. is like distracted the hell out of me. So oh, that's me. I mean, I'm that guy. I I, I prefer someone that's in gear, uh, in that hey, sense. But just that's in, a just in great closure, track. in closure for dynamite, like. For me, yeah. that was probably their best week of television yet. I was I was entertained. I was marking out for the whole two hours. Like I didn't want it to end. I, I think the TNT the TNT title match stole the show. I agree. Mm -hmm. And I, I had a friend over who he loosely watched WWE back in the day. He hasn't watched wrestling in forever. He was more interested in the allure of coming over having some beers with the guys. Yeah. And he watched it. He's like, I want to come over every Wednesday. If you watch this every Wednesday. I want to watch this with you. Like, and that to me, that's how you sell a casual person on wrestling. That oh, show that's for everyone. Young fans are not going to realize this, but TNT itself, AEW is doing it right now. They have the same excitement that WCW did 25 years ago. They oh, really do. They pulled it off. Every week, they're destroying the demographic of 18 to 35. Mm -hmm. And that is the money demographic. And NXT can't touch it. They were number one this week in that 18 to 35 demo. And I'll tell you, the, the people that are sold on sports entertainment, they don't watch wrestling. It bores them. It no, literally it, bores them. It does. It does. To, stories, wrestling, does to them. wrestling does to a sports entertainment fan what sports entertainment does to a wrestling fan. It really honestly is the truth. So and I see so speaking of entertainment with our with our wrestling, did you see that our truth has a game show now on the network? I know you said you don't have the network anymore, but no, our truth stop. Our truth has his own game show. I love our truth. I think his character he's got his character nailed. He's he's an underrated when when he's retired in the wrestling business, he will forever go down as one of the most underrated talents that well, there, that there is. Let's Let's put it out there because actually Charles said it today on That Way Cool Wrestling Show. For a guy that's close to 60, close yeah. to 60, 
He looks like a 35-year-old man. He hasn't changed at all since he came in as K-Quick. No, he doesn't. And I got news for you. Let him go back to the NWA and challenge for the world title. Let him be the NWA champion again because he's I would taken, go right behind he, that. He's taken black don't crack to new heights. Literally. Literally. Yeah. He's Literally. just he's, But he's this awesome. show is fun. I do recommend whoever's watching this, give it a chance. It, it's our truth hosting a game show. So he's asking questions that have no relevance to anything. Some of the answers, like he asked, he asked, he asked Sheamus, who was the first ever Irish-born champion in WWF history? And he put Hornswoggle <laughs> as, as, the, as the answer. And he then Sheamus like, he's from freaking Green Bay. Like He's like, no, nah, he's Irish. And just like the, the typical no, Irish. He's Irish. <laughs> no, he's Irish. You, no, you've, got to, you've got to watch it. It's a lot of fun. No, he's a uh, leprechaun. He's the Irish. Episode this week. They'll do another next week. But, you know, <laughs> I've enjoyed talking with you. Let's yeah. have the last call. Last call sounds like a deal. So, for me, this week, my favorite part of wrestling this week, last call on this show, we, whatever we enjoyed the most about the week in wrestling, for me, I went back in time and I watched Bash of the Beach 94. I loved it. There's one match I watched that I'm going to give everybody homework that's watching. Stunning Steve Austin versus Ricky the Dragon Steamboat for the TV title. Nice. These two have been feuding hot up until this match. Mm -hmm. Just the way those two work, the realism, the way, the way Steamboat would whip off Austin into the ropes. And Austin would just hit the – it was the small things in this match that just talked to me. The way he would hit the rope so haphazardly, like you're yeah. so used to a guy making a full turn into the ropes, catching it right underneath his armpit, and like just the way the small stuff in that match just made this feel like a real fight to me. And I feel like a lot of stuff like that is lost today in wrestling. And I'd love to see them get back to it. And it's not sports entertainment. It was wrestling made to be sport. And that's yeah. what I and that's why I loved Cody versus Eddie Kingston this week. Because mm -hmm. that made it feel like sport. It made it feel like real competition. I didn't feel like people were going through the paces, choreography, whatever you want to call it. But I'm encouraging everybody to go check out Stunning Steve against Ricky the Dragon Steamboat at Bash of the Beach 94. That's a great call. That's a great call. I was very similar to you. Uh, it was one match. I wasn't watching actually a pay-per-view. But I was catching, I, I, I'm on a number of different feeds where I can watch different matches that come up. And it was, a, it was an old WCW match where it was Vinny Vegas, a.k.a. Kevin Nash, and Diamond Dallas Page versus, as the Vegas Connection versus Ron... What am I doing? <laughs> versus Junkyard Dog and the Ron first... Stark? Ron Starr? Yeah, it was Ron Starr. Wait, <laughs> Ron Simmons. Ron Simmons and a junkyard dog. Here we're like, I was like, this is actually a pretty cool thing. And like, you could sit there and say, well, kind of cheesy. Let's put two black guys together and see how they look type of thing. But it was actually very cool to see this big Ron Simmons, you know, who was hot in WCW. Was very hot in WCW. Junkyard dog. What could have been 90, uh, 94, maybe 95? Okay, so this, 90, is, this, is 94? After, this is after his world heavyweight Ron, title. This, this is after his title, Ron. Yeah, yeah, he was already champion, and Ron yeah. was probably not far from leaving and going to WWE uh, sure. at that point. But Junkyard Dog came in, and in all honesty, Junkyard Dog, who in the WWF had a great run as a dancing. The kids love it, blah, 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 bullshit, like, like, like Gemini and, and LeGrand like to complain about. And I believe it. I agree with them. I'm to with being them. like this, to bring this, this tough hammock throwing guy in WCW. They made men better. of them again. He was a lot better than WWF ever let him be. And yes. it's a shame that that's the only memory that people will have of Junkyard Dog. For most yeah. people, it's the work that he did in WWF. 
But if you go back into Deep South and Memphis and everything like that, yeah. like his feud with DiBiase, that should be the homework we give everybody this week to go relive that rivalry. Yes. Junkyard Dog and Ted DiBiase before he was the million dollar man. Like you, you want to talk about a guy that never got his just due? We were talking about our truth. Junkyard Dog never got his just due. And you know what? We never really got another junkyard dog again. Uh, yeah. I kind of years ago, I was kind of thinking that the Pope would be this generation's junkyard dog when he was still actively wrestling. Uh, yeah. but then, but then he got hurt and it, more doing managerial stuff now, whatever. And I'm like, all right, so we lost that aspect. Uh, it's probably going to be a lost character in a sense, but that was my thing. Junkyard dog and Ron Simmons, two big, big animal dudes. Fighting the, sure. the the Vegas connection, who were who were when you look years later became world tag team champions as Diamond Dallas Page and Kevin Nash as the insiders, um, yeah. and were two of the hottest guys and became future world champions multiple times over. Exactly. Yeah. So and back then, if you told me at that point in time that both those guys were going to be future world heavyweight champions, I probably well laughed at you. Yeah. Because I was still getting over the fact that he was Oz when he was yeah. in Vegas. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, exactly. Oh. You know. But anyway, Danny J, it's been a blast talking to you today. Uh, you. Remember to check us out on DJB Productions Network on YouTube. Like and subscribe. Follow us every week. My valet will be back with me next week. It'll be yes, a lot better will. to look at her than it will be to look at you. A little no, bit. And I guess mean, what, guys? You're a little bit of tan. You're a little tanner than Sting was in 97. So I think you can get the push. You might be bit. able to get the push. A little bit. You can find me bit. on Instagram at B underscore steady. You can find me on Facebook at the Brothers McIntyre. And Danny J, where can everybody find you? That's right. You can go to DJ Danny J right on Facebook as well as That Way Cool Wrestling Show on Facebook, so make sure you check those out as well. Right there, djbproductionsnetwork.com brings you right to the channel. Hit subscribe, and we are proud to announce that That Way Cool Wrestling Show is the official and the exclusive podcast partner of the newly reforming North American Wrestling Alliance, the NAWA, which is in the tri-state area. They were the original feeders for the World Wrestling Federation back in the 80s. These guys actually were, they, they promoted most of the guys that became, went on to become ECW before ECW was big. So that's a big thing. Check them out right here. There's a playlist right on DJV Productions Network for the NAWA. We're going to be showcasing some promos. We got some original shows where we're going to be showcasing their talent as well as actually some wrestling matches once they come through. And uh, it's a big, big deal. We're very happy to have that partnership with the NAWA. Uh, and I want you guys to check that out. But share, subscribe, most of all, enjoy. That's Don, awesome. Really Lots of big things to come from DJB Productions Network. Keep an eye out for that. For Danny J, I am Johnny Mac. We'll see you next week. Keep it too sweet. Thank you for listening to that way cool wrestling show breakout. We'll see you at the matches. Goodbye, everybody.